Awo, Shalom, Ras, Tefari. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We're going to continue with this um, this uh, Shabbat, uh, Shabbat, Shalom, Senbet, Salam, peaceful, sabbatical remembrance for those of the brothers and sisters who are faithfully seeking to remember and to carry out and to live within the al Kidan, to live within the covenant and to preserve, to reclaim and preserve our birthright. So here's where we're at right now. And this is from the Sabbath house, the Torah readings and the updated, this is the updated um, version of it that's at the website. Now, here's where we're at right now, actually. Actually, these two portions from last week we touched on, um, Kamotu B'chwala, which is known in the Hebrew as Ahare Mot. Now you see this asterisk. We was um, speaking on that in the previous the previous uh, vid, and so we're now using this presentation right here to kind of show you where it's found. Now this is page five right here of the Sabbath House readings that you can download as a PDF and print it out about thirteen or so pages so that you can have it as a reference. Now, along with this, it's important also to um, understand the, the order. You understand the order, the sabbatical, the sabbatical order, our ancient sabbatical order that, that, we, that we keep so that you'll know exactly, well, which particular reading is for which particular Shabbat or Senbet. Now, here's where we're at as far as um, Friday, May 11th, 2012. We're at, actually, we would normally be at Kedusan, seeing that last week was this, but this asterisk here, this asterisk, the asterisk that you see affixed, if you go to page, um, page 7, and we did this in a live version, but you can probably see it much better if we just, Go to page um, seven. You see where it's speaking about the portions that are marked with the asterisks can be added to the following week's readings. So therefore, our bad that we didn't mention this in the Ahare Mot series, but for the Dek Amazamorit, the diligent probably have already cited that, but our bad that we did not mention it. There's a difference between students, you know, those who are students as far as those who are waiting for the teacher to say it and those who are paying attention. But our bad that we didn't mention this. But what's interesting is that normally this week's sabbatical would be Kedoshim or Kedusan, which you see right here, Kedusan. And now Kedusan refers to the holy ones. Now there is the Ethiopian Holocaust and the the Black German Holocaust. These are some suppressed facts and truth that the foreign white Western Gentile Goyim media does not speak on this. Now, interestingly enough, when we're looking in um, Vayikra, the book Vayikra, and let's go to. Uh, uh, Kedoshim right here. Let's go to that portion. And it's on page, um, yeah, when you go to the introduction, this is the book that we have, that we have published. The cover looks a little bit like this right here, so you can identify it if you seek to get a copy of it. That's how the cover looks right there. Now, this is the nine, these are the nine saints, the Kedusan of Ethiopia from one of the um, Mecca, that's is a holy place in Ethiopia. Okay, this is in the third book. We're in the third book right here, the book known as Waikra or Vayikra, according to the conventional pronunciation, the Ashkenazi more pronunciation, Vayikra. Well, more correctly, it would be Waikra. But we're taking this in stages and steps of, of study and learning. So in this particular book, this is this right here, Right, that we that we publish in order to give the disciples and those who truly seek to know the fullness and mature in the teachings of His Majesty based on our Ethiopian Hebrew um, divine heritage, based on our divine heritage on page 290. So Kedoshim. So here's the Ahare Mot, the Ahare, 
to 31 and here Kadoshim. Now we really seen that this is a common year, 2012, these two, that asterisk meant that these two would be attached in one reading. So we're going to touch on this as far as Kadoshim in this particular um, vid and this part of our series, touch on Kadoshim and connect that to the, the Ethiopian, the faithful martyrs during the fascist antichrist um, invasion, the massacre, that those were the Kedusan, those martyrs, those faithful witnesses of the true Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, those in white robes. According to what the word, the Bible, the prophecy says, however, because they were and are what they would call black, because they are black Hebrews, black Jews, and black Christians, this um, world of sin, this world that has been deceived by Satan, the devil, basically doesn't, doesn't regard their blood and their sacrifice as being anything. And that's one reason why most of you all have not heard of the Ethiopian Holocaust or of the black German Holocaust as well. There's a vid out there. Some of you all might have seen it or not. We're not too sure. But let's just get some light, some light. Give us some light, all right, here. This particular, this particular book we had pointed out before. This particular book by Sister um, Imani um, Naya. Let's just give you a little more of the cover right here. The Mystic Path of Rastafari, the Doctrine of the African uh, Monophysite. This particular book right here is a very good book. Check out her site. Her site on the internet is known as the Ethiopian Holocaust. So for more information, check out the Ethiopian Holocaust. I'm going to quote a little bit from this particular book. Um, Waleta Selassie or Imani Naya, Sister Imani Naya's book. Once again, the Ethiopian Holocaust website. Go Google it on the internet and you can find some more information there. If you can, you know, support, you know, her her efforts and the efforts of of, of her um of her organization, which is keeping necessary attention on the half of the story that has not been told to you concerning the Kedoshim or the Kedusan. So Emor or Amor would be this sabbatical reading according to what we have been saying about the, the, um, the common years and they being attached. Let's go to the actual area in this particular Torah portion, Volume 3, so you can see it for yourself. All right, um, what two, which page is in? Here we go. Uh-huh. All right. Now, here, here's, 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 this is page, this is page um, 230, right? 230. All right, and if you want to get a copy of it, you can look it up on Wikipedia, but here we compiled it, because it's a hard remote, which basically said that they are, they are, um, Connected, you see right here, Parsha Ahare and Kedoshim, according to the Haftarah reading. Um, now this is that Parsha, and it tells you right here that when the Parsha Ahare is combined with Parsha Kedoshim, as it is in 2012, 2013, 2015, 2017, 2018, the Haftarah, the Nabiya, the prophetical is the Haftarah for the Parsha Kedoshim, or the Kedusan. Now, the Ashkenazi Jews, the European Germanic Jews, they read Amos 9, chapter 7 to 15. Check that out. You know what was that? Make a note of that. Now, the Sephardi Jews, or the Spanish Jews, um, who racially are a little closer to the black Jews, the whole more connection in Europe and... It, that's a footnote on that. They read Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 2 to 20. So it's interesting that this particular time, and, and I'm not too sure if I saw this previously right here, paid attention to this, this part in teaching the other basic aspects. But as you know, we've been speaking a lot on Amos 9 and 7. You know, Amos 9 and 7, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, or children of Israel? Now, another interesting thing about Kedoshim or Kedusan or the holy ones or the saints, 
the real saints, not not that um, Catholic uh, apostasy, that schism right there. We're speaking about from the root and the truth. Let's go forward to the next portion right here. Now, here is, this is the the portion right here, Edoshim, and you find that on page um, uh, 289, on page 289, right? Now, let's just go over this just briefly and just get a basic groundation on this. It's either spelled Kedoshim with uh, K, now they put the apostrophe, as we explained in the vid, because that's the clicking K, like in Kabbalah, the K, the K, do, but they have Kedoshim, right? Kedoshim, they have as Kedoshim, but really Kedoshim. So they point the vowels similar to the Ethiopic, and here they have Q. So this basically shows you that even the Ashkenazi Jews are kind of evolving, because after all, the Kedoshim portion is Amos 9 and 7, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians, the male children of Israel, so forth and so on. Now, this is the Hebrew of it, and in Hebrew it means holy ones, but it's also translated as sanctified ones and saints. They, they use sanctified, sanctity, consecration. They use these other words also to translate the same Kedesha or Kedesha root, which is basically to mean holy, but the, the, the active idea, the root idea, the etymological idea of this word means to be set apart. And as a familiar reference to many of the Rastafari and other brothers and sisters um, within the society is Numbers chapter 6, where Numbers chapter 6 speaks about that if anyone would vow a vow to yod hey wow hey yahweh they would vow the vow of a, of a Nazarite, and they would be holy to the Lord, separated. So the key idea of, of holy which is the background idea of the word saint, which is the Western Christian Gentile word for, for kedoshim or kedoshim, kedusan, means to be set apart, to be set apart. In other words, to make a distinction between the holy, that which is set apart for Jah, for Yah, for the true God, in the name of the Mushia, Yeshua, Jesus Christos Getachin, and that which is not holy or profane. You understand that there's a separation between we who live within the covenant, the al Kidan, or our divine heritage, and those Negroes, blacks, and colored Smith, Jones, and Johnson who are profane. They live like the Gentiles. They have Gentile names, European names, so they don't want to know their divine heritage. You know what I'm saying? So let them, let them, let them be. But for, for I and I who have come out of that, you know what I'm saying? That's an act of kedese. That's an act of, 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 of consecration. That's an act of, in principle, of holiness. So this Torah portion is very important. So this is the 14th word and the first distinctive word in the Padasha, the portion, kufal in the Amharic Padasha, in the, in the modern Hebrew. And it's the 30th weekly portion, Torah portion, Padasha, in the annual, they say Jewish, we say Ethiopian, Hebrew, black Jewish, just to re-identify, to kind of, in like in a court case, to redirect, to rightly redirect the point, you know? Cycle of Torah readings, and it's the seventh in the book of Leviticus. This is where we're at. It constitutes Leviticus 19 and 1 to Leviticus 20 and 27. Now, we as Hebrews, as Ethiopian Hebrews and, and faithful Jews, in the diaspora, generally read it in late April or May. And so this is the Friday right, um, evening and morning, this is the evening part, May 11th, 2012, time check. Now, the Luni Solar, the Lunar Solar Hebrew calendar contains up to 55 weeks. The exact number varies between 50 in common years and 54, 55 in what's known as leap years. Now, from an Ethiopian Hebrew perspective, and see the video that we posted on the leap years, 2012, a leap year. We are in agreement. In other words, the Ethiopian calendar and the 
so-called Jewish or the modern Hebraic calendar is at agreement about this matter, but those who are um, following the way of the Gentiles or the foreign way, the Antichrist, the, the, the false Christianity and, and whatever else, you understand, they kind of confuse about this. But in leap years, for example, because remember, it's lunar and solar. It's lunar and solar, and we've tried to explain that a little bit, but um, we'll get into that another time. It, this is, in leap years, for example, 2011, 2014, 2016, the Parashah Kedoshim is read separately. In common years, for example, 2012, 2013, so what year is this? 2012. This is 2012. Now, some Ethiopians who haven't really been, you know, who, got, who, who kind of are lost a little bit, a little bit disorientated, you understand, they might not really recognize that. They might tell you that this is a leap year from what they think. It's really, it's really a, um, it's a common year, 2012, 2013, because they're, they're doing what the Gentiles say, that if, the, if it's divisible by four, some kind of mass nonsense. Whatever. Remember, there was no zero year. All right? Anyway, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2017, 2018, the, the portion, Parsha, known as Kedoshim, is combined with the previous Parsha portion, known as Ahare, Ahare Mot, to help achieve the needed number of weekly readings. So that means in a cycle. So we will, will read all of the entire. Um, five books, entire Torah, which is a sabbatical order within that cycle, that orbit, as above, so below. This is the reason why this is very, so, very much important. Now, if you go on on this page, it says that some conservative, speaking of the quote Jewish congregations, they substitute readings from Leviticus 19 for the traditional reading of Leviticus 18 in the Yom Kippur in what's known as the, the, the Minka, the Minka uh, service. And then it gives you, you can see this person's book, so forth and so on, the ISBN, rah, 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 right? That's, a, you know, good to know. Now, and in the standard Reform High Holy Days prayer book, this is different, different schools of thought within conventional Judaism. You understand Leviticus chapter 19, verses 1 to 4, um, 9 to 18, 32 to 37. They have the Torah readings for the afternoon, what's known as the afternoon um, Yom Kippur or the Minka service, right? And there's another book there that, you know, ones can check out, all right? Now, here's the point we want to focus on, and then we're going to link this now to the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian Holocaust, where where hundreds of hundreds of thousands of Ethiopian men, women, and children were literally Holocaust. You know, a Holocaust is a burnt offering, right? A burnt offering. Make no mistake about it, right? Um, Kodashim or Kedoshim is also the name of the fifth order of the Mishnah, the Tosefta the Babylonian Talmud. Now, if you go to the Wikipedia, you can click on this if you want to, you know, go a little bit deeper in your studies about it, and we do suggest that, all right? But the term here, Kedoshim, is sometimes also used to refer to, they say, six million Jews murdered during the Holocaust. Now, some of us may say, well, they're always talking about just them. But are they really talking about them, or what about the black um, German Holocaust? You see, there's a black German Holocaust, too. And perhaps that's where some of the millions of the, quote, Jews that they're not really fully identifying, which are black people who were also murdered, you understand, fit into this equation. But we know when we combine those of the Ethiopian Holocaust, when we combine those of the black German, the hidden black German Holocaust, and let's bring up some graphics here so you can, um, so you can uh, see this a little bit better. Right here, let's see if we can get these uh, pages. Um, have a few things we want to show you. We can even show you the pictures, though they, some of them are very, very, you know, they're not really for children, uh, you know, um, who are not really maybe so mature. We don't want the children to be having certain nightmares, asking why this happened. We have to be able to tell our children the reality of life so they'll be prepared 
for these things that are going on, these things that they experience. It won't be like these lost Negroes, blacks, and colored Smith, Jones, and Johnsons who are asking, why, 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 why do I always have to have it to black people? First of all, you don't know who you are. Black is not a nationality. You know what I'm saying? And in a sense, black is not really a race, if you really understand a race from a true national ethnic perspective. This whole black-white thing is all part of the modern Masonic checkerboard game. But we are beyond that because we have separated ourselves to the Most High. Therefore, the Most High tells us who we are, and we're finding so much that we didn't know before. Now, this, this book here is an interesting book, the Germany's Black Holocaust. Did you even know there was anything like this? You know what I mean? Did you, I mean, we, we kind of stumbled across this page ourselves. We didn't even know, you know what I mean? We didn't even know that, that so-called that had happened. You know, because we always hear about so-called the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. And most people think that the Jews are only the so-called white Jews. Now, this is another, another book right here also with the title Holocaust, The Black Holocaust for Beginners. Right now, all these are examples of the Holocaust, the real Holocaust, our real experience. When we're talking about so-called Black History Month, or when we're speaking about matters concerning Black people's experience, yes, we know about slavery, the slave trade, so forth and so on. But look at the dates right here: 1890 to 1945. Ain't this something? 1890. Now, when was the Son of Man? came into in, into this this atmosphere, this earth. It's 18, 1892. Now here we have 1890 to what, 1945. I mean, were you even told about this? Have you even heard about this? That's what we want to title this, the Ethiopian and black, uh, and Germany's black holocaust. The Ethiopian holocaust and the, the black German holocaust as well. Now, if you look at the bottom part of this book, let's see if we can try to bring this, you know, try to bring this up right here so you can see the bottom portion of this, um, what's written down here at the bottom. This book is by someone named um, Furpo W. Carr, Ph.D., and if you can't see this clearly, I'll just read it. It's a black scholar's 30-year study of the Holocaust including the untold story of a black female survivor and the liberation of 8,000 blacks. We could say 8,000 Ethiopians. We could say 8,000 Hebrews, since we know who we are. Most folks would say blacks, because this is all part of the, the game to, to, to strip us of our birthright. It's almost like a kind of reverse of the whole Esau and Jacob thing, putting us in the position of, of, of Esau where we waive our rights. So even though a lot of this is black, and black might be the highest level before you cross over, you understand, before you cross over, before you become a Hebrew or a, or a Hebrew, a Peru, before you cross over and you return to true birthright, and only in birthright do we have sovereignty. So when we talk about issues like sovereignty and a lot of this, you know, sovereignty, you could, uh, sovereignty, we have to really understand that true sovereignty, not clipped sovereignty, see that black blackism is kind of clipped so sovereignty. When we get to true sovereignty, we must truly know, first of all, what is our race? Hebrew, being Hebrews, is our race. The fact of the matter is that the real and true Hebrews, racially speaking, are black. I mean, going way back there, you understand, and even coming down to the present time. Nationally, they are known as Ethiopian. Thus, we have Amos 9 and 7. And we just touched on the fact that, that in this particular Kedoshim time, the Ahare Mot Kedoshim time, that one of the readings for Ashkenazi Jews in Amos 9 and 7 deals with the children of the Ethiopians, one of the proofs positives of this divine heritage and this divine connection, Amos 9 and 7. And in the earlier part of the vid, we, we kind of um, we touched on that. Now, we have some other, some other um, 
pictures here to kind of uh, uh, kind of link this and, and show this. This one here, I think, is kind of interesting as well. This is IBM. You understand IBM and the Holocaust. So you see these um, when you hear about the Jews getting the European Jews, namely, mainly and namely, getting monies from Germany and keeping the the Germans and the different nations who participated or turned their backs to the suffering of the European Jews. You understand? It's very important to really over this because we speak a lot about reparation. Folks talk about reparation. Folks talk about this or that. And they don't understand the law. In other words, what law they don't understand, they don't comprehend correctly, is the law of Jah, is Jah's law, which is Torah. You, 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 see, that's what the difference really is between all this black, you know, this, this Negro black and colored stuff and why it doesn't really go far because you really can't declare full sovereignty, you understand, when you don't even know your true birthright. You see, it begins with that birthright. It begins with name and nationality. Name and nationality. Very, very important. So if you're carrying around the European names, you know, if you carry around these European names, if you consider yourself a Negro, black, and colored, you have not even gotten out of the white man's hand, really. That whole thing about emancipation, it's not a, a trick so much, but it's the law. See, emancipation, the emancipation means that we were freed from slave master, these individuals who claimed um, rights all over us, and then we were actually bought by the federal government or Lincoln. I mean, Lincoln is the, is the point man for the federal government. And this is where we get the whole birth certificate, you know, the birth certificate, as Bob Marley said in one of his songs. This is where we get all of that basically from, you know, this birth certificate. And if you understand the birth certificate, what the birth certificate really means legally according to law, it means that your name, you understand, you're basically bought and sold on the stock market. You understand, and you don't even know it. You know, you're call, your name or the name that you call your name, the name given to you, the name that you regard as your name. So don't say, well, my name is, no. That's not, see, if you say that legally speaking by law, that means that you have accepted, you understand, you have accepted, you have acquiesced to that. But in ignorance, a lot of us have been doing a lot of things that we really didn't know because a lot of ones who did know the truth haven't even shared it with anyone else. You understand? But they have personally benefited from it while the rest of us, so to speak, have gone to hell or stay in hell, so forth and so on. So these are some of the points that are also connected, connected with the bigger, bigger, you know, when we're talking about the bigger, bigger issue. You know, because there's a bigger, bigger issue when we're speaking um, of, 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 of becoming a, a people, you know, and coming out of this fully and correctly. The first part of it, you know, is, 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 is the God part, you know, is, 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 that, is that God or that Jah connection. Now, there's a, there's a pic here that we also want to show you. You know, these are some of the related pictures in uh, Ethiopian Holocaust file that we have right here let's 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 bring this over you know saying bring some of this over now these are some of the um the, the teachable elements right here the the word pictures um to kind of demonstrate some of the atrocities that were done in ethiopia and the ethiopians the faithful let's qualify that not just the Ethiopian, because, you know, we do have some um, internal enemies. We need to recognize it. It's carried. Judas, Judas is carried, is a, is, is a demonstration of that particular type, you know, these internal enemies. It's, it comes down to whether you are living in the covenant or whether you are living outside of the covenant, whether you are an in-law, all right, or whether you are an outlaw. Now, this is significant. This is also from Sister um, Waleta Selassie, Sister Imani Naya's, um, I believe this particular clip right here. 
from her website where she's speaking about Mussolini's revenge. This was uh, Mussolini's revenge, the Ethiopian Holocaust, 1935 to 1941. Now, I noticed some very interesting things between these two, these two sets of dates, 1890, 1945, right? The Kedusan, the Kedoshim, the Kedoshim. You have 1935 to 1941, which was the tail end of this. But then we still also have the lost sheep over here in the, in, 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 you know, in the Americas, and we'll touch on that. And we're now going through that phase of it, which biblically speaking is part of that great tribulation. You understand? Know part of the tribulation, part of um, the Bible calls it Jacob's, Yaakov's trouble. Come remember, Yaakov was given a new name, Israel. But when we say Jacob's troubles, like almost saying the lost sheep's trouble, they still are not stepping up and standing up, you understand, and identifying themselves. They're not in their proper person, you know, in propia persona sujuris. They're not in their proper person. They're under false names. They're under European names and wonder why they can't represent themselves in court. You understand? They have to actually get a court appointed because they're they using somebody else's name. You see, they're never going to tell you this so directly, but if you study the legal documents and the paperwork and go to the law library and really start to learn what's what, you understand, for you and for your family. This is especially important for us to learn this and to act on it because it's going to determine whether our, uh, our descendants, our children, our family, the next generation will truly be free or will they be just emancipated Negroes, blacks and coloreds, lying and deceiving themselves and the posterity? And then whenever we see these cases go on, you know, like they have this case about um, stand your ground. There's a stand your ground thing. They, they're not talk, talking too much about it in the media, but there's a um, black woman who's about to go to jail and do some serious time, even though she didn't kill nobody with a stand your ground thing. That doesn't work for her, but it works for this this um this other guy, you know what I mean, the Zimmerman guy. You know, people say, oh, it's racial, such and such. On a level, yes, it is one seed, the seed of the serpent persecuting the seed of the woman. Did you get that? The seed or the race of the serpent persecuting the race of the Redeemer, the race of the Messiah, and even the black Messiah. So as Maxie says, God and history will be the judge. Emperor Haile Selassie, first Kedemawi Haile Selassie, this was his prophetic speech to the 52 members of the League of Nations in Geneva, Switz Ager, or Gen uh, Geneva, Switzerland, June 1930, uh, June June 30th, 1936. Very important. You see, there's a, there's a bigger significance to this. When we really begin to understand, you know, and comprehend and act on our, our birthright, you understand, our birthright and recognize uh, the importance of our birthright brings us to nationality. And, 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 and then that also now, brings us to our name or our new name and our true name. And when it says to work out our salvation, working out the salvation means that we have to rescind all false claims at law. And this means with the paperwork, change your name is just one step of it. But it's a very important step as well. For those, see, this separates those who are truly in the covenant, the Kalakidan, who are living within contract, and those who are outside or outlaws to the law of Jah. And see, this is, this is so very, very important. You know, you wonder why Negroes, niggas don't look at the international scene. They can't because they're property. You know what I'm saying? They are property. They are, they are, they are limited to this, this, this deception, you know, this deception of being a Negro, or nigger or nigger stuff, you know, nigger business. Something I've I've read in this book right here, the Ten Niggers. I don't know if you read this book by Gerald W. Um, D. S. M. D. Illustrated by James Brown. 
I don't think James Brown the singer, but I'm not too sure. And it has a statement here from um, Dick Gregory. And Dick Gregory gave a, a little quote in the introduction. He says, we're ready to change a system, a system where a white man can destroy a black man with a single word, nigger. Well, that's a part of it. But even many of these outstanding black people still have been um, kind of half-stepping on the real major issue because a lot of them are still running around with, with masses' names. You understand? Still are defining themselves as a three-fifths property person. You know, with a three-fifths, they are property. When, when you, they, they're still talking about civil rights instead of civil liberties and human rights on the level of human rights, so limiting themselves to what Masa can do for you, you understand, instead of what the black Moshiach, what the black Messiah has already done for us, and then we acting, you understand, we then doing the work, we then working out our salvation. So this is very important, this, you know, just to just contrast and compare these two, I bet you didn't even know, you know saying that there was a black holocaust, that black people were holocaust, you understand, in the holocaust. This further, this further, this is further evidence, you know what I'm saying, this is just further evidence of our, of our case, you know what I'm saying, making our case. In this um, Torah portion, um, uh, Kiddoshim or Kiddusan, it provides us and give us it gives us an opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to really see it in reality. You see what I'm saying? In reality. So when you study what a Holocaust, you know, what's the meaning of Holocaust? Holocaust is basically a burnt sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? And this particular Torah portion, as those who have been studying along with us, no doubt you know that this particular Torah portion also touches on that on that very, very same theme, you understand, of the burnt, the burnt offering. We dealt with it briefly in Ahare Mot. Now, just to attach a, 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 a name and a face to this, no doubt you might recall, this is our brother right here, statue of um, Abuna Petros. He, he, he was a martyr. He, he was martyred for his faith. You know, saying he was martyred for his faith by the Antichrist um, Romanists. You know, saying the Antichrist Romanists. And there's another picture. Do we have another picture of the of of the brother right here? Let's bring some of this side. Sorry, we have to go to a sidebar over here. You know, saying sidebar this, and let's bring some of the Buna, the Buna. There's also Buna Yisahak that we also wanted to make. Let's make mention of the Abuna Yisahak and just bring his his picture. He's the one whom Kedemawi Hala Selassie had sent to the Western Hemisphere. And it's through his work, such as, as his book on the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which we will advise all ones to, to, to get a copy of it. And um, we had a copy, but that was stolen by a Canaanite African you understand, from us, you know, not, not all Africans are our people, even though we do have a right to that continental identity, but we need a national identity. Being an African is not a national identity. Let us just kind of note that for the record, you know, speaking of law. But most Negroes don't know law. All they know of law is what the white man tells them, you know, is law. Because they all know God's law. Therefore, they don't really fully understand common law. Now, this is a picture right here that's interesting because on, uh, some of these pictures are kind of small. So we have to zoom, zoom them in. Here you are seeing, you, you're seeing, and you see uh, one, one of the martyrs, one of the Kedusan, who most likely, no doubtedly, lost his life. You know what I'm saying? These right here, almost like American soldiers, but actually are supposed to be German soldiers. You know what I'm saying? German soldiers. So we have a Holocaust, and I'm and German, Italian, Italian soldiers, my bad, Italian, even though the German soldiers were doing their bit against that um, so-called black population. 
you know, was saying black population that they were holocausting at the very same time. Notice at the very same time as as look at this right here at the very same time that we have that we have this going on Germany's black holocaust 1890 to 1945 we would have the fascist invaders you know and the fascist aggressor ones who call themselves Christian Roman Catholics but by their actions we know they were Satan not they were devils Diablosoch you understand um, and there was a massacre. You, you know, uh, let's let's look at a couple more pictures right here. You know, this is this is not an easy issue, and we know that a lot of people have have, have suppressed, you know, have suppressed what what went on. Look at this right here. I don't know if this person has been shot or killed. You can see. You can see there's a smile on this person's face. This is one of the Romanists. These guys call themselves Christian. Notice that. What kind of Christian? They are Antichrist Christian. It's, it's, it's all evident. But see, all the time you're hearing about the so-called European Jewish um, Holocaust, and no doubt they did experience, you know, they did experience something those who were killed, and ones were killed, whether it was 6 million just of white Jews, well, obviously it wasn't, you know, and if they want to keep using that 6 million number, they're going to have to, you know, tell the truth, tell the whole truth, and that means connecting all of those, you understand, who were covenant people. Notice, everyone who was saying that they were in the covenant of God, whether they were so-called the white Jews in Europe, you understand, in, in Nazi Germany, whether they were, 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 were these Hebrews in Germany, whether it was the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian Christians or Christians and Jews, you understand, the Ethiopian Christians and Jews, as we see right here um, with Ethiopia's Holocaust, all of these people were killed, not just because of their race in that sense, but because of their faith. You understand? Their faith. So let's not bemuse ourselves and think that when we look at the Ethiopian Holocaust, we could say there was a racial element to it. But even more so than a racial element, there was a faith-based element because even in the Ethiopian Holocaust, they used African niggers and African colored ones. They used, you know, African so-called people, traitors, ones who, who were outlaws. You understand? They used black on, against black. You understand? Black profane people, black evil people. You understand? Sellouts, ass kisses. You understand? The ones who worship the white man as God to go against truly godly people, such as the Ethiopian Hebrews. His Majesty and that particular faithful generation. And some of these are the pictures, you know what I'm saying? Some of these are the pictures that prove it. Um, there's another one a picture like this that, that had quoted what the, what the Antichrist, Antichrist um, Romanists were saying. They said, kill everyone that has, that wears the cross. They actually said that, kill all those who wear the cross. Let's continue to give you some of these these picks, and we have to thank Abuna Yishak, you understand, because in Abuna Yishak's book, that many of these images, as disturbing as they are, many of these images were published. These are, obviously, you could say ones being lynched. So we talk about lynching in America, or another set of lost sheep in America. They were lynched in America, but they were lynched also during that time of the fascist invasion the antichrist satanic invasion of Ethiopia. You know what's, what, what, what's more, brothers and sisters? This is what the Bible is saying would happen in Revelation during the time of the return of Christ, even Christ in his kingly character. They said there would be days like this. Johannes the composer, John the revelator, told us about this. But you see all these images? All these images have been suppressed. You haven't seen these images, and, 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 and most haven't been told anything that there was even such a thing, right, as one here, Germany's Black Holocaust, 1890, nor have they been 
told anything about the Ethiopian, about the Ethiopian Holocaust. So we, what we're showing you here is some exhibits, you know, some of the evidence. Now, as we go into some of the other pictures, some of the other pictures may be a little bit hard to take. In a sense, so I don't know if you have little children or youths, whether you really want your children seeing this. Maybe you want to talk to your children first. Maybe you want to check it out first. I know sometimes um, ones and ones have their children. You know, they see worse sometimes in some of these movies, but we're just warning, warning you, all right? We, we, want, we could put a disclaimer here, just warning you. Now, this is another picture. All this occurred during this particular time period, 1935 to 1941. In Ethiopia, and this is not to mention Germany's Holocaust, it's not to exclusion of what was happening to black peoples in the Americas, the so-called lost sheep in the Americas. Here you can clearly see a, a person's head, just to bring it in a little bit a little bit larger so you can see this um, full, um, full screen, right, or fuller screen. Here we have you see all of them. You see one person, you know, um, even holding their nose. You understand? You know, a dead body. You know, remember the hot sun. You can see the hot sun beating down on it. These guys have no sort of no sort of conscience. Their conscience are burned out. These these are probably you know um, satanists. They are satanists. I mean, how could you do that to another human being? Look, these are these are the heads. These are heads. I don't really see the body over here. Seem like heads. And in, in case somebody says no, that's probably just the body because they wore white clothing like the martyrs, like Revelation, John the Revelator said. So that's just that you, you can't see their clothing, you know, because some don't want to really believe that so-called human beings, white or black, could be this, this demonic, this cruel. Now, um, now if you, as, you, as you can see over here, there were ass kisses. These, these are some of the same ass kisses. These are the kind of Africans effing up Africa today. They're not in the covenant. You understand? They're, you know, they're not in the covenant. They're in the covenant with the devil. You understand? Who's the devil? These people are devils. Look what they're doing. This is the first thing that's going to be headed. Look at the heads over here. All right? Look at the heads over here. Look at the heads over here. Don't you see? Maybe it's a good thing this picture wasn't sharper, wasn't, wasn't even more clear. You know, just of how awful, God awful, disgusting is this. This is to prove the Ethiopian Holocaust. Some folks don't get it. So when we say May 5th, we must remember May, May 5th, you understand, is very important. Ethiopia Independence Day. You understand, you're Dilk and, you understand, a very important day for us. And because of the careless Ethiopians, you understand, those who are not in covenant, who claim to be Ethiopians, those are the Ethiopians that um, Zephaniah 2 and 12 speaks to, the Ethiopians who be slain by his sword. Not these brothers, you understand, sisters, mothers, and little children. These were the martyrs. You understand, these were the martyrs right before, right prior, you understand, to um, World War um, II. We say this was the real cause of World War II, as His Majesty's prophetic words can be invoked. You know, the match has been struck in Ethiopia, but the fires and the flames would burn Europe. This right here is the Italians lynching more black people. Here you get to see them lynching. You know, these ones are lynched on the, on the, on the gallows. Here is another. Is a, here here's another um, another beheading scene. Another scene of it. Notice what it says in Revelation. Remember in Revelation what it says. It says about those who are, who are beheaded for the witness. Those who were beheaded for the witness of Christ. You understand? Beheaded for the witness of Christ. Look at this black man. I mean, I mean, look at this. You see what's going on? You know, do you see what's going on right there? Those in the white robes, you understand? Those in the robes of righteousness. Then if we go further, we got a, we, we got several more of these right here to show. Now, here's, here's the skull and bones, you understand? Here's, the, here, here's their trophies. You know, you see some of those 
some European, some of them really some sick people. Um, many of them sick people, many of them, you know, and, and white folks could tell you how, white folks who, who, who have awoken somewhat can tell you how sick other white folks are. You know, I mean, I mean, you can see it in a lot of the art and media and what goes on in the so-called real world. But um, they have these churches where they have these skulls and these bones. They have actually church. They they have these in the Catholic churches. They call it skull and bones of the martyr. But where does this come into Christianity? You know, where do they get this from? Not from the Bible. You understand? But from their father, Diablos, their father, the devil. Now let's go to this picture right here. Here we got another another picture, uh, and this is this is probably what we're going to sum up with this with some of the pictures. Though there are other pictures that we can use, we just want to make a basic demonstration. This is from the same from the same period of time. You know the Ethiopian Holocaust. You can even see that many of them in the, on the bones were shot in the head. You see that right there. You know, was shot in the head, or their skulls were, were, you know, their skulls were broken. This all occurred. This all occurred during the Ethiopian Holocaust. And once dear tell us that we cannot say Holocaust, who are they? They have no right. You know, saying they have no right to say so. But we need to teach our children. You know, we need to tell our children the truth. You know, saying so. It's in the Buna Yisahak's book. I finally found the logo. This this was on the original cover of the book. This is part of the original co cover of the book. You understand? Know and that's what they were killed for right there. They were killed for that witness, the true witness, the true and faithful witness. You can, you can imagine when these ones found out that this is ancient Christian civilization in the highlands of Ethiopia, right at the time of Haile Selassie being crowned. King of Kings. In fact, Sister um, Sister Imani, Sister Imani says some very interesting things in this particular book right here that we showed you a little bit earlier. Just to to clip a little bit of this right here and share this, um, she says um, when this is done without bias, one should be able to clearly see. That Bible prophecy, Revelations 19.11 especially, is speaking about H.I.M., is speaking about his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie, Ketamawi, Haile Selassie. And, and, and for, for the sake of the record, let's just bring these, some of these down right here. Um, we'll try to maybe enlarge some of these pictures, put, put some of them up, but you should be able to find them out there. As we said, they're in Abuna Yisahak's. You know, Abuna Yisahak's um, um, book on the Ethiopian um, Orthodox, on the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. This is this is good right there. So let's just go on. So that that Bible prophecy is speaking about His Imperial Majesty as the returned Messiah, who some might call the Black Messiah, our kinsman Redeemer, and the Ethiopian Holocaust of 1936 where the nations of the world raised up to wage war. All of the, the World War II, you know what World War II really was about? It was about the nations of the world, the Gentile nations, the white European nation, and their black ass kisses and Asian ass kisses and the rest of them, you know? Um, basically waging war against God, against, against God's appointed elect, against God's very elect, against his imperial majesty, who sat upon the white horse, he who sitteth on the white horse. And he did smite them with the double-bladed or the double-edged sword of truth on June 30th, as we see right here in this historic um, picture, June 30th, 1936, when he delivered that historic and prophetic speech to the League of Nations in Geneva, Switzerland. During the Italian or the Italo-Ethiopian, they call it conflict, of 1936, when Mussolini exterminated millions of Ethiopians with poison gas, while the world, you know, weapons of mass destruction, that's what that, that is and was in that day and time, while the world sat by and watched black people, 
throughout the African diaspora participated in uprisings from the ghettos of Harlem all the way down to the jungles of Central, Central Africa and from the Caribbean islands and South America to the Black Farm Belt in the Deep South and from the streets in Paris to the waterfronts in South Africa when they got news of what was going on. Of course, they don't like to tell you these things because, you know, if they tell you these things, you, you're going to start asking questions and, and, and no longer be you know, no longer be a mind-controlled slave of slick, woolly, white supremacy. Some say these uprisings equaled, if not surpassed, those of the so-called Marcus Garvey movement. Over 16,000 black men from the United States, the U.S. alone, and countless others from throughout Africa, they had volunteered to fight and to lay down their lives right, alongside their Ethiopian Hebrew brothers to diffuse the momentum of the movement, guess what the United States government <laughs> did? They reenacted an old law. They reenacted, you know, to stop black people from wanting to fight on behalf of the emperor, on behalf of this man who, who they can hardly say any good word about. Today, they reenacted an 1818 law that prohibited U.S. citizens. Look at that. U.S. citizens. You are still under that Negro, Black, and Colored Smith, Jones, and Johnson, or Jackson, if you please. False. Artificial person. You're on the artificial person. You say, I'm emancipated, which means that the federal government bought me, bought my family line. Everybody got white man's, this white man's name that's related to me. That's what it basically means. So, therefore, they were able to enact this 1818 law that prohibited U.S. citizens from fighting in foreign wars. Huh. Imagine that. You, you, see, you understand why this thing that we're speaking about, about name and nationality and birthright and living in the Al-Kidan, living in the Benai Barit, living in the covenant, why it is so important? This penalty, this included a penalty of $1,000. Imagine $1,000 in 19, like 36 or so. $1,000 penalty and three years in jail. Why? Because you, you do not own yourself. But, but whenever white, white boys want to go somewhere else, many of them go to South Africa. Remember the, 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 the white boy allegedly who shot and killed um, um, Dr. King, right? He wanted to go to South Africa. Did, 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 did they put a penalty on him or whatever like that? Oh, he wasn't fighting in a war, but really there is a war going on over there as well. Don't wait for them to tell you it's a war. They'll tell you, the, you know, the, the Gentiles, the Goyim, if you let the Goyim, the Gentiles get the upper hand on you. You know, you know thinking about what's really going on, brothers and sisters, I could understand, and I were, I'm really not angry with the so-called European Jews, even if they did write the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. You know, because when we know ourselves, it serves our interests as well, too. Plain and simple, leave enough Leave it there. You understand? Um, F a cracker. You know what I mean? <laughs> For real. But as you go on, the Ethiopian king of kings, first of all, foundation, he was glorified. He was crowned in 1930 at his coronation. Black people throughout the African diaspora. Remember, African is not a nationality. It's a continentality. But that doesn't really come in clear law. So that's why we say we're Ethiopian you know what I'm saying? We're Ethiopian Hebrews or, at best, Ethiopian American. And you can put that on your ID. But first of all, learn the basic principles, you know what I'm saying, of this, you know. So there's a lot of information out there that, that brothers like Tariq, um, Tariq Bey is putting out, ones like Ann Poo and others. You can check it out on, the, on, on even the YouTube just to get a better idea of, What's at stake? What, what this is all about? Black people throughout the African diaspora, including the early elders of the spiritual movement of Ras Teferi, they knew immediately that Revelation 19.11 had been fulfilled. His Majesty's coronation, right, as well as 19, in 1930, this coupled with 
the Ethiopian Holocaust of 1930, of 1936. When you're reading that part in Revelation about the martyrdom, about the beheading of the faithful, and we just showed you the pictures from the Ethiopian Holocaust, several pictures of Italians, of devils, of Satanists, of Roman Satanists glorifying, holding up the, the beheaded skulls of Ethiopian martyrs. Of, of our faithful brothers, and of course, the sisters also were, were you know, children. That they, they killed everybody. They just wanted to kill everybody who was wearing the cross. You understand? Which was, now, the Holocaust of 1936 was only six years later, six years later after the coronation in 1930. What does this symbolize? It symbolizes the fulfillment of true, verifiable, biblical prophecy. You understand? Biblical prophecy. But how come you don't hear about this in your church? Because your church, you know, is a counterfeit church, basically. We could tell you that straight up. You understand? Tell you that straight up. It's a, it's a nigger, black, or colored church. It's a counterfeit church. Your pastor got Smith, Jones, or Johnson, Jackson. He's a nigger. You understand? He's a nigger. He, he won't tell you that you're... Why would he tell you that you're something more than what he's willing to step up and stand up to be? You over? Now, had his imperial majesty... You know, if, if he was born, if Hala Selassie was born the heir, for example, the heir apparent to the royal throne in, in London, England, and inherited the, the, same, the very same divine titles that, that in Ethiopia goes like 3,000 years, fact, documented, proof, and had blonde hair and, 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 and blue eyes, blue ivy, blue eyes, there would have been no doubt as to who he is in the minds of the deluded and deceived. You see, now these truths, it's not to denigrate, people say, so-called Christian, Jewish, or even the Catholic faith, because faith, the original Catholic, you know, the original Catholic um, um, popes and holy fathers were black, were African, were Ethiopian, before the hostile takeover by the Gentiles, the Goyim, came into effect. You understand? But to report history accurately, you understand? This is to report history and our story accurately in the manner in which it actually occurred. You understand? F a cracker. 1930s, you know, the 1930s is significant because it represented a time really of the end of Gentile domination. And much of this we are, we are, um, we are inspired by Sister Imani's work right here. You understand um, the same, same book we just showed you a little bit earlier. You can check out the Ethiopian Holocaust site once again. Tell the sister that I and I sent you. you know, and um, that the 30s represent a time, this is her own words, represent a time of the end of Gentile domination of the indigenous peoples of the world, from, from Kwame and Kruma and Ghana to the Mau Mau's in Kenya, you understand, and from the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lion of Judah in Ethiopia, to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the United States, and the Honorable Marcus Garvey in Jamaica, and the world African people. You know, it's like saying, just very generally, very broadly, like saying European, you know, African people. They answered the call of redemption and began to raise up from the enslaved condition. You know, they began that the rise began at that time. Now, Rastafarians, I and I, we know that all these things are merely symbols or symbolic of really greater things to come. But this chaplain felt that when Christ reappeared, that racism, oppression, hunger, and suffering would be eliminated overnight. That's how a lot of your, your you know, like, like the Disney movie you've seen or something like that. You know, some, some stardust would happen and everybody would just be high. That's what, <laughs> anyway, um, we, we reminded him, you understand, we reminded him, and this is Sister Imani responding to a particular chaplain on, on the merits and the reality, the veritas of Rastafari faith. She reminded the chaplain that in God's eyesight, one day is not a 24-hour period. We asked him to look around and see how far the black man has come since 1930. The black man's redemption is taking place at this very moment. 
and we will see a new world. You see the new world. When they say a new world order is coming, yes, it's coming. But they're trying to tell you that it already belongs to them. Wish your time. That's a lie to Mattel. We see a new world when Africa and Africans are free. I mean, the sister goes on in this as well, you know, but we just wanted to just share that because she's one of the few at a time when, when it's almost like it was totally unknown that, that, that moved on this ministry, you know, saying to keep it, you know, front and center where it ought to be. You know, the Ethiopian Holocaust. Now, this is, as we said, this is connected right here, you understand, with, with what we've been talking about here, um, Kedusan, this particular sabbatical. Notice May 5th was just, um, what, six, what, six, was that six? Can we say six? Yeah, six days ago. Roughly six to seven, let's say six days ago. Ain't that something? You know, so we're in that time period. So these that you see martyred were the Kedusan. Those in the white robes, those who were martyred for their faith, even as the scripture says, it says that they will kill you. You know, many of these um, um, Romans, that they will kill you, and they would think that they, they're doing God's service. Now, now, notice, if you will, you know, if we look back over some of these pictures here, these ones are thinking they're doing God's service. You think this guy think he's doing God's service? You think really he know he's a he's a Satanist on his way to a lake of fire? Yeah, on his way to where, where do you think he's going? You understand to pie in the sky? That's a lie. You understand? How about this one? How about this one? Do you think he's think he's doing God's will? Don't you see the beheading? This is bricks behind. There's probably some skulls behind there. You know what I'm saying? And see these Uncle Tom niggas here. We got to watch these people. We, we got to watch these guys, especially even today. Because they're the ones who've been throwing stumbling blocks in our movement. And they're the ones who a lot of you, a lot of y'all who are half-stepping, like this dude over here, will call brothers. And some of them even be wearing the feds like some of the Moors. So Moors, y'all better clean up your act. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we recognize that, that um, Nio uh, Ruth, you know what I'm saying? Ruth was a Moabite. We don't have no problem, you know, with the Moabite woman. <laughs> They can enter the congregation, you know. But y'all better clean up your act. You understand? Y'all really better clean up your act. Because some, like, what was the brother, Sarnetta? No, um, Sarasun Sati. He kind of blew you up there, you know, talking about uh, how a lot of y'all had, con or ones like y'all. Y'all might say it wasn't y'all, but ones. But y'all better take responsibility for your jurisdiction, you know, because this would have never been possible. If it wasn't for those um, for those sellouts, you know, just like right now they're trying to thwart I and I redemption with these same sort of sellouts. There's other pictures that you actually see some of the videos from from the 30s. You actually see these guys running running hand in hand, you know, with the Italians. You know what I mean? So. The Holocaust. We have a Holocaust over here in the Americas. We have a, we had a Holocaust significant in Ethiopia, in 1935 to 41. We had the Holocaust of Black people up here in Germany in 1890 to 1945. So we better recognize. You understand? Know recognize more to come, brothers and sisters. On this particular point, we've kind of gone a little past an hour. You know, we like to keep lectures within more or less that time, but it's been very important for us to speak on this. So when we see Kedoshim or Kedoshim, you understand? And the term Kedusan or Kedoshim, this must also refer to these black Hebrew, Ethiopian Hebrews or black Jews, if you will, who were murdered during the Holocaust. Now, the way this is worded, this is general enough to include the Ethiopians as well as the blacks who were martyred in, in Nazi Germany, and we're challenging the so-called, our so-called white Jewish of the faith. If you're faithful, we'll call you brother. You understand? If you're not, you're another. But we're challenging those white Jews to stand up, man, recognize we understand that many of your people were, were, were martyred or killed or murdered, you know what I'm saying? But stop denying the fact of who the Ethiopian Hebrews really are. It's, it's not going to go well 
for y'all in the future. And it's not going to be us who's your enemy because we were never your enemy even before. It was these Gentiles, you know what I mean, the very same Gentiles that some of your people wrote about in the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, you know. Love the part where you talk about the king. In fact, I just got to, since I already went over the hour mark, let me just put this in. This is a protocol. We're going to upload it to our website and probably have it as a downloadable pretty soon. You know, um, it's interesting what you'll say in, in, in this part about the, the, the king of the Jews, you know what I'm saying? Well, the real king of the Jews, you know what I'm saying, is, is the king of kings of Ethiopia, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. You'll talk about Moshiach now. You know what I'm saying? Did you miss him? Sister says they missed him, right? He came, and you missed him. Look what Sister um, Naya Amani says, well, that's what he says. Are you one of many waiting for the second coming of the Messiah? Do you know what signs to look for that will tell you the second coming is near? What would you say if we told you that he has been here already, but because he was black, a black man, an Ethiopian more nationally correct, Ethiopian Hebrew, he went unnoticed and only a selected few knew that he was here? Those who know of him? have been scorned, persecuted, tortured, imprisoned, thrown into insane asylum, and even murders for daring to proclaim that the Messiah had returned as a black man. But he was not just any black man. He was a king. And not just any king, but the king of kings, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the elect of God. This black king inherited his ancestor's throne, which throne, the throne of great King David, and is also a member of the messianic line, the line of the...